Hello. Well, I'm coming to you with a couple of things today. This is going to be uh, my first documented measuring of uh, charcoal into the, the hopper. Uh, I'm thinking that today I will earnestly use like a three quarters of a chimney. And then at the end, I'll do a, a peek and see uh, how close that was. I'm kind of thinking it's going to burn about half. But uh, I don't start measuring it and, and documenting it, and I don't know how I'm going to get there. But anyway, that's all based on the uh, previous video. So um, hopefully today I will pull the right blade out. I'll push the button at the right time with the computer on. So I'm going to try not to be distracted by the camera. I'm going to put the uh, tumbleweed in, not haystack, but the tumbleweed. I'll get it lit. And then I'll do my uh, regular routine as much as that I can. And uh, then uh, bring on the stars of the show, the vegetables. But meanwhile, uh, I think I told you that, you know, I've been cooking with a Weber. And uh, I thought that I would show you uh, the Weber that I'm referring to. So let me take you there. So here's the barbecue that I refer to when I say that I used to be a Weber person. Well, I still am. It's just that this Weber hasn't been used in a couple of months. Don't even know what to uh, expect when I take the uh, cover off. Uh, well, I use a uh, cast iron grills. This works out real well when I'm doing my steaks and stuff. And that's about a half a chimney down there from the last cook I used. And that's where I'm getting this half a chimney idea. And this is a uh, rotisserie ring to add a little more height, which allows me to really do deeper cooks, like with chicken. Very little flare-up when I have it here. But I hook the rotisserie on here. The bearing side of it rests over here. It works out really well, but highly recommend these cast iron. And as I, like I was saying, I haven't been out here in uh, oh, two, three months, and I do have a little rust spot starting. Got to be real careful with cast iron. So this is well seasoned. I mean, even as I touch it, I can, I can feel that it. See on my finger, it, it still has a coating. I always scrape it down and uh, wire brush it after I get done cooking, right as I get done cooking. Then I uh, brush it again when I get ready to cook, be it a day or a week later. And then I always rub it down with some folded paper towels with uh, olive oil on it and get it all oiled up again. And that's just years and years of seasoning it like a, uh, a black iron pan that you would probably use when you camp or a lot of people now are bringing them into the house into the kitchen but uh yeah that's that's my old trusty weber this is a 26 and three quarter inch one so you know it's a little bit bigger but uh back to the mission in hand i came down here to get the uh, the chimney starter so anyway, I'll be using that on this cook with the master build. Just thought you'd like to see the old Weber. Well, I hope you didn't mind seeing that. That's my 26 and 3 quarter inch Weber kettle with the rotisserie. I think uh, I had to give it a little air time because after all, it's the thing that got me here. So anyway, that said. So, nothing in there. Please take my word for it. So, this is the bottom, and it's kind of like popped up in the middle a little bit, which takes a little volume away. But anyway, that's the bottom. This is measured with my ruler inside halfway and then full. And to me, whenever I take a scoop of flour or anything else, it's usually a little bit on the heap side. So... If I had to 
eyeball it. And I'm going to right about here. And of course, with the center popped up a little bit. So I'm going to I'm going to say it's a little less than three quarters. I'll probably show that to you. It's a little less than three quarters. But I'm confident that half is going to be just fine. I think I need to show you what it looks like so that if you don't have one of these uh, chimneys, you can just look right in. Okay, so as you can see, if you're looking in there on that stainless steel insert down there it's not blocking the uh, gr uh, the grate that goes into the manifold inside the barbecue so it's basically at the top of that grate is what I'm saying is a is a healthy half a chimney of car charcoal or just a little less than three quarters anyway so that's what it would look like so, I don't know if I have the camera exactly where it was before, but close enough. So I'm going to put in three chunks of pecan today. I think that would give me a nice smoke. And then my tumbleweed. Get that in there. More in the center this time. happy with how much smoke it's never the same twice and I maybe what's really to the advantage here is that it's not so full of char charcoal uh, the briquettes so and that it's lower it really really looks like it's starting off fine so anyway let me fire up the computer and looking at the temp I like to start it off at uh, 225 because that just while I'm putting the uh, food in there and everything else that's allowing everything to kind of warm up and I'm going to leave the top one in remove the bottom one close the door and I'm going to close the lid I don't know if I need to have that shut or not but why not and now I'm going to push this down and now you can see the fan is really blowing uh, up through the top here so that's going to really I don't know if you've ever used a fan when you have one of these charcoals to get it started but when you have like a little, a little cooling fan and you stick it down there in the bottom it really excites all the charcoals and get them, gets them lit pretty quick So by taking the bottom one out and leaving the top one in, the fan is forcing the air through there and there's only one way out and that's here. Oh, there's a lot of heat there already. So that's about what I want to do. I'll take my finger off, close this up. And pull out the slide. At that point, I think I've done everything. I've got it set for 225. I've got the uh, tumbleweed in there. I use the button to go. Both blades are out. It's all closed up. So I'm on my way to get the vegetables. So about two and a half, three minutes later, I'm back with my vegetables. They're, they've all been lightly sprayed with uh, extra virgin olive oil and then I put a little salt on them and they've been sitting like that for about 15-20 well, minutes and uh, now I'm going to get ready to start putting them on the rack before I raise the temperature to my cooking temperature 
So again, the reason I'm doing a lot of videos with vegetables, again, I mentioned that I'm trying to lose weight, and this is my weight loss program using a master build. And it's getting, uh, it's getting good results. I don't think this is about me throwing numbers out there. I don't want to make this against somebody else and you know, so forth and so on. This is just what I'm doing for me. But if I'm successful, you'll see it in my future videos. So let's see how that works. Meanwhile, let's get the vegetables in. short amount of time because I don't want to really dry out the vegetables. I want them to be still moisture um, in the middle. And I don't know what's bothering me more, the onions or uh, the smoke from the grill. But anyway, I'm going to take it up to 465 and I'm going to set the timer set the timer for 21 minutes. That's going to allow uh, for this to get up to the 465 and then I'm actually looking for a 15 minute cook. But it's my advantage of uh, letting the smoke and everything kind of come up to uh, temperature together. So let's see how that works out. Okay, this is coming up quick. I've only uh, had the camera off for about two minutes, uh, thereabouts. We can, you can always do the math based on, based on what I just said. But the uh, temperature now is up to 440, and uh, my timer is down to 19 minutes. So I said it went for 21. Of course, this doesn't show, you know, half seconds or, or, or minutes or, or any of that. So. Yeah, it just went to 18 minutes, so that was three minutes ago. And 4.47, it's saying 400 here. It's going to be hotter on the grill, and it's going to be, this is only going to report this section of the, of the grill. But that's why I wanted numbers. I, I don't want to run, I don't want to come over here and find that I'm doing vegetables at 600 and then, this is telling me it's only 350 down here or something. You know, it's like I, I want both numbers. So I look at this one as being the grill temperature, and I'm looking at this one as being the upper shelf temperature. Uh, are we getting smoke? I'm looking in the sun direction. Hmm. For a minute, I don't think I'm seeing the smoke like I'd expect, but we've got a long ways to go yet. So it's up to 10, it's still holding at 400. So I'll be back when the timer goes off. Well, it came back a little early. Uh, we've got about 14 minutes to go still, and it's at 4.53, it's moving around a little bit. And this is usually where I park myself. This is sort of an old habit that I got into a long time ago with uh, using the Weber, I was always looking for the temperature to be rather stable, and the only way to do it would be to stay there and make little adjustments. I can use like the meter thermometer probes that you know are computerized and are wireless, so you can stick it in and it would give you ambient temperature along with the meat temperature, and then it would show you suggested uh, cooking times based on what those numbers were. 
So that would give me that ambient tension temperature that would tell me like, oh, that state temperature is dropping 20 degrees. I need to open up the bit and get it to go a little bit. And of course, if you've tried to adjust anything on the Weber, you know it takes about 15 minutes for whatever you do to really uh, take effect. Where this, man, we're talking a minute, you know, and that's, that's another beautiful thing about it. So, uh, after I get everything off uh, the grill and I shut the uh, grill down, I'll either come back out here later uh, in the day or I'll, uh, I'll look at uh, showing tomorrow how much is left in the, uh, in the bottom of the stack here. And also, uh, it's been like six, seven cooks since I've actually cleaned the inside, and I'm not going to do a degreasing or anything because it's really just vegetables and olive oil. But uh, it should be rather dusty in there, and so I have like a little Dewalt battery-operated uh, vacuum that I use. So I'll make that my next video, um, uh, letting you see uh, how much dust accumulates inside uh, from doing all this. So far, uh, the two times I've done it before, it's, uh, it, it goes pretty quick. It's not, a, it's not a big deal. Now, it would be a bigger deal if I was doing big greasy fat cooks, you know, but don't have that. All right, so let's keep letting it go. It dawned on me, it's Saturday. I'm gonna have myself a, a local beer from a company called Drake's. And it's called a Denogonizer, and it's a double IPA, so one of my favorites. <sighs> Probably not great for the diet, but one beer a week isn't gonna be too bad. So every once in a while, I've been <laughs> editing the videos and I hear the background noise uh, that, as I sit here and talk, I don't hear. We, we've lived here about 30 years, and we're by two airports. And this is the downwind to base to final uh, to the airport. So almost always there's a plane flying over. And uh, I guess at some point I'll try to be a little more attuned to that and then do a cut and let him fly by, but right now, uh, being a, uh, an ex-pilot myself, I owned a small Cessna for about 20 some odd years. I like the sound of airplanes, thus moving next to an airport. I think people that like trains should live near railroad tracks and not the other way around. People shouldn't move next to an airport and then complain. People shouldn't move next to a railroad track and complain, so uh, that's my little, that's beer talk already. All right. So I don't know if you hear this, but this is sizzling away like if it were a steak. I'm getting the, in the little. Okay, the uh, timer just went off. Yep, this is a good time for me to flip things over. So I set the timer now for another six minutes and then I will be done. So uh, that's it. That's normally why I don't do the video based on cooking vegetables, but uh, in that this one may have a, sort of a nod towards uh, losing weight using a master belt, then uh, I thought that I would show that process. My wife and I will normally have breakfast around 9, 30, 10 o'clock. It's, it's not a big breakfast. And, uh, gee, I wish I could look at my phone to guess what time it is, but I'm going to say it's about 2.30, 2.50 right about now. So we'll have these uh, right after they're done, 
So that's so that's like a three o'clock lunch, and then that way when dinner comes, we'll have a real light dinner. And uh, I find ever since I've been uh, eating vegetables like this, like uh, we don't peel the skin off. I mean, after it's cooked, that skin is so soft, and that's also where all the nutrients are and stuff. That it doesn't leave me hungry. I'm not looking for snacks and things like that. So uh, this this is a, a diet that, if it works, I recommend it for everybody. Uh, they always say you eat more vegetables, and uh, it doesn't hurt to have some fruit. So we're doing fruits and vegetables and small protein dinners. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping that that's going to work. But then right around the holidays and everything else, we, we should be cooking the uh, traditional kind of meals that you would expect. But anyway, tomorrow uh, we'll know how much is left and uh, yeah. of the briquettes. And then uh, this will all be opened up and we'll vacuum it out and we'll see what the inside looks like. And I did take a peek in the box because I wasn't seeing the smoke, but I'm smelling it. It's, it, it, it's the, pecan, the pecan wood is smelling great. So as soon as I open the box, the chunks that I put in there, they're just blazing away. So I actually have fire in the box underneath the briquettes, and that's got to be uh, stimulating those briquettes to want to run, because the fan really hasn't been running at all. But, you know, it's not running away. I'm only at 325 right here, and uh, it's saying uh, 446 over there, so obviously I'm not out of coal. So, uh, yeah, everything's going swimmingly, as it were. So, about four more minutes, I'll be pulling off some vegetables here. It says about a minute to go. We're still at 4.57, saying about 3.30. I didn't really notice. I usually use my phone app, but the phone is what I'm using for the video. So, when you're down for the last minute to go, it breaks it down to seconds. So at this point, I've got 26 seconds to go. I didn't know it did that. I wanted to share that. These are sweet potatoes, yams. Not sure exactly. What was bought, but that's what it looks like. So these are kind of like hot, thick potato chips. They're, uh, they're still moist and soft, kind of like uh, sweet potato pie in uh, sweet potato pie chips. Very nice. Kind of satisfies the sweet tooth. asparagus here in California, so it's really fresh at the store. Gotta have it. It's like uh, when it's uh, artichoke time. Gotta have artichokes. And it is artichoke time, actually, but we don't have them here. So I'm taking off the yellow onions. These are so sweet right now. can't believe it. These baby zucchinis. Uh, yeah, that's real good. So I'll take that one. Maybe. I'm not sure I'm taking all these off. Oh, yeah, yeah that was good. Yep. Good. Take that one. Yep. Real marks. Yeah, I don't know from here if you can see the grill marks, but yeah. Now, with all that smoke and everything else, there's just so much flavor. You don't have to put anything in the way of, other than the uh, original olive oil and the salt that I put on there, and just maybe a little pepper if one needs to or whatever, but no dips, no mayonnaise, no sauces. It's just pretty much straight. And these mushrooms I want to give just a little more time to, so I'm going to let them sort of sit.
Okay, cooking update. Um, I figured it was going to take about a half a chimney, and you saw where I went a little more. I'm watching my temperature drop. It's now down to 422, so that's down from 465. So I took a peek inside, and I have maybe six briquettes left, plus all of what is in the hopper down below. There's still a lot of heat in that hopper with even the uh, wood chips down there burning. So, uh, no need to go back and look inside. It's, it's going to be gone because out of only about four briquettes left that look uh, really ashy, uh, by the time I blade it, they'll end up uh, burning themselves into a point where they'll fall through and they'll just be in the hopper when I'm done. But I'll show the hopper uh, so you can see if that uh, stainless steel grate uh, mod that I did to try to have a little less waste, um, see how that looks. So we'll have that to look at. We'll peek in, but it'll be empty. So that tells me that I was successful on my guess. That uh, I, I wanted those mushrooms to have another minute or two and 412 degrees that they're still cooking and I don't need any more. Um, if this was a steak or something critical, I probably wouldn't have been quite trying to test how few I could put in there. Uh, I would, like I said in the uh, other video, that I would rather err to more. But to determine real numbers that I can actually share with you, on what it took. It's three quarters of a chimney, a half hour cook, at high temperatures, so that really burned it up. If I had stayed at 225 or whatever, it would have not been that big. Plus those big chunks of wood that I put in there, they were creating flames of about this high, which is literally going right straight up and supercharging all the rest of the coals, or the briquettes that were in the chamber. So that's what I'm going to be doing from here on for these vegetable cooks. I'll be putting three quarters of a, a chimney in there. Now, what would happen before when this was full, I would burn three quarters for the, for the, for the cook, then I'd put the blades in, and it would probably burn another half a chimney, uh, just trying to snuff itself out. And uh, fine, what does that cost me, an extra dollar? I'm not trying to save a dollar, but uh, same time, I don't want to throw uh, coals right into the hopper. You know, that's that's not why guys have come up with these mods to put uh, a choking effect on that grate to kind of keep the coals in there longer. So uh, yeah, it's all good. All right, taking the business off. off the grill or the, or the computer that's a must however there's no need to put these in there's nothing to save but I don't want to break the habit I, I want to keep the habit going pick up the vegetables, turn you off, get my beer, and go in and have dinner. Thank you for stopping by. If you like the video, can you do me a favor and hit like? Um, and if you have it in your heart, can you subscribe, get my numbers up a little bit? 
I'd love to let, let this channel go uh, uh, mainstream and I need to get up to a few more. But I thank you all that have already signed up with me. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye. Okay, here's the PS part of the uh, episode. Let's take a look. What do you think? How about that? Down to four or five pieces? That is exactly what I want to do. There's no waste this way. It all went to the cook. Hmm. Yeah, let's see what we've got in here. Well, I am surprised how many chunks are in there. I thought by putting that stainless steel wire mesh in there that I would have more ash and less chunks, but anyway, that's fine. Uh, still work on that part. Meanwhile, I've got the uh, main target plan taken care of, which is putting, you know, figuring out how many coals I need to put in for my cook. So, that's it. We're done today. Have a good night. Take care.